Ask the Lawyer with Bruce L. Shiner. Speaking of the law, as he helps us understand the law a little bit better, as he does every Wednesday at this time. Would you please help me welcome Bruce L. Shiner, attorney for the injured. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning, Todd. How are you doing this morning? Excellent. How about you? I'm doing great, thanks. Good, good. Everybody uh, doing okay in the wake of the storm in your office, your circle of friends, that kind of thing? Yeah, we were very lucky we weren't affected by the storm. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah, there's still a lot of folks in our area with some flooding issues and so forth, so we feel. Uh, but, oh, boy, when you see what's going on in the Carolinas, whew, I don't want that for anything. I know what you mean, Todd. We've got somebody with a, actually a couple of people with a big problem. They need a little bit of advice. Would you mind if we read the email to you? I'd love to. Okay, let's jump right into it. It says, my wife and I were stopped at a light on Daniels Parkway when a pickup truck slammed into the rear of our vehicle at a high rate of speed. My wife and I were both taken to the hospital by ambulance. We both have severe injuries, which will require lengthy rehabilitation. The at-fault driver was not injured and was ticketed. When we contacted his insurance company, they indicated that he had a seizure. Thus, it was an act of God, and he's not liable. Our neighbor is friends with the at-fault driver's wife, and she had told them that her husband had experienced seizures for the last few months. Is the insurance company correct about it being an act of God, and thus the driver is not at fault? Please ask the lawyer what we can do. I think we've all heard that expression many times in our lives, act of God, without really knowing what it means in the legal sense. Bruce, can you explain that a little better? What they're saying is if someone had a seizure and had no way of uh, knowing that it was coming on, Mm -hmm. it it was an act of God and it was not foreseeable. Mm. However... And also a good comparison is someone's driving down the street who's never had a problem before and they had a heart attack. Right. That's an act of God. Gotcha. But in this, ca- in this case, the facts are such that this person was experiencing seizures prior to the accident. Mm-hmm. So he was negligent in driving down the street knowing that he had a seizure disorder, not knowing when the seizure might strike. Mm-hmm. And look, look what happened to these poor people. They were victims of his negligence in driving when he knew he was experiencing seizure disorder. Mm. This is so, why it's so important to follow a doctor's advice. I don't know if he saw a doctor beforehand, but I'm sure somebody in that situation would be told you got to be careful when you're driving or let somebody else do the driving. Yeah, or I'm sure there's medications that help you prevent seizures. Sure, sure. So that, and I, I think the law provides that you, you have to go six months without having a seizure before you could return to driving. I see. But the insurance company's normal model of we never pay <laughs> isn't going to work in this case. Right. They have to hire an experienced personal injury lawyer. Mm-hmm. And I'm very confident that they would make a substantial recovery. A- am I right in guessing, just from the, the more than 10 years you and I have been having these conversations, I think I've learned a thing or two, that this might require subpoenaing uh, medical records and so forth, and it might get complicated, in other words, right? Yeah, it, it probably would get complicated, and you would need the medical records to show that he had the prior seizures. Mm-hmm. You would also want to depose his wife and him to get on record that he actually did have the seizures. Right. So this is nothing you want to try to handle yourself. Enlist the aid of a professional and do it now. Do it right away. Okay, Bruce. Sounds like there is the possibility for some improvement in their situation, and that's what we look for each and every Wednesday. Thank you once again. Oh, it's my pleasure, Todd. Looking forward to next Wednesday. As are we. Have a good week and say hi to everybody. Thank you, Todd. Take care now. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Bruce L. Shiner, attorney for the injured. And let me tell you how to submit a question if you would like to for future consideration. Just go to the website and put the keyword Bruce in the search box. That'll take you exactly where you need to go. If you've been injured, uh, like the email we just read, for example, bypass what I just said. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. And call immediately the Port Charlotte office of Associates and Bruce L. Shiner, 941-743-7777. All kidding aside, it's important that you call quickly in a situation like that. 941-743-7777. 
Somebody will get started on your case quickly, too. Believe me. Associates and Bruce L. Shiner telling the Todd Matthews sent you. Kicks Country 92.9.